everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we are gonna continue down the vintage test equipment rabbit hole because I have, again, a pile of it and I just wanna go through it and show you guys some of this cool stuff. And I have to, I have to like put these videos out constantly because I don't wanna tear these apart off camera. I have to do a video in order to tear them apart because I love seeing what makes these things tick. And I think the reaction plus the overview, it's genuine. I've never looked inside these devices before and you probably have never either. So here we go. I have an IL444 phototherapy radiometer. <laughs> what a mouthful. Made by International Light. And this guy is probably over complex for what it does. That is the truth. Take a look at this connector. Is that now wild? I have what, four pins, five pins here, plus a socket, plus a, what the heck is this? This one here is, it's got a flat blade. Is it adjustable? I don't even know, It's it's got a flat blade so it's adjustable or removable. Yep, it's removable, there we go. So it's a male and female, so that way there it keeps its polarity. That's how they did it, is you can probably interchange these to switch your polarity around. And the other end, this is your light meter. We're, we're gonna take that apart too. So uh, guys, this is the meter itself. I have a big clickety clack knob that goes from 10 by one by or 0.1. So that tells you um, if it's a really faint light, you're gonna put it on the X10. X1 is a one to one ratio and then 0.1 is a 10th ratio. And uh, here's the interesting thing about this guy. Uh, when I flick it on, it doesn't stay on. And I'm wondering, is this one of those devices that you flick on and you just get your measurement and then you let it go? Like it's designed that way so you don't intentionally leave it on by accident? I don't know. Is this photo detector so sensitive that it can only be powered momentarily? I don't know guys, I'm really curious. I'm really curious. Uh, and over here I have a scale, uh, zero to 10 or zero to three. Now I don't even know if this meter is in lux. It's, it says milliwatts per centimeter squared BR. Hmm. Nowadays we measure things in lumens or in lux. Um, it's an interesting, fascinating device. Uh, I love these Bakelite type connectors. I absolutely love those. Those are so cool. Um, look at this strain relief. It's got an actual physical spring. And oh, the good old days when they used to put on fasteners that were way too big for the um, captive plug or, or the strain relief holder on all these <laughs> customizable plugs. This plug's made by Winchester Electronics. Um, of course, I highly doubt that company's around anymore. But yeah, this, this is it. And um, you can either have it in this orientation or in this orientation. And it's got a, uh, a piece here where I believe you can wrap the cable. Although wrapping a cable will, of course, uh, speed up its destruction. But I guess that's the cord wrap for your light meter itself. Um, my, my cord it doesn't look like it's ever been wrapped. It's in beautiful condition. The meter is in beautiful condition. I have one little potentiometer right here with a little through port where I can adjust it. Um, I don't know if that's for zeroing or for self calibration. No idea. But guys, you know the story. If I've got a vintage piece of equipment here, let's tear it apart. That's all I can say, guys. We gotta tear it apart. I love these Bakelite switches and the, the knob right here. Look at this, look at it. It goes X1, 1, 10, and then it just blah, it just keeps on going. I, it is what it is. Um, fantastic piece of technology though. I bet you this guy still works. And if I can zero it out, calibrate it, I bet you it's still gonna be fully functional. Probably pretty accurate too. So on this end, I've got the data plate. It's a metallic data plate. It says International Light. Made in Newburyport, Massachusetts. 
1950. It says that this was made in 1950. That's what it says. Guys, oh my gosh. This was just m removed from a hospital last week. We can do better, guys. We can do better. We can do better. Oh my gosh. I highly doubt it was used on medical equipment, but who's to say? All right, so we have two nine volt batteries in series. So this is an 18 volt system. I got two potentiometers right here and we have a removable transistor. How cool is that? So this is a solid state device, technically. And over here on the meter, so this is like one of the meters that you would find on audio equipment and stuff. And uh, it just takes whatever electrical signal in and you know, that's how you scale it. So that's interesting. I got two little transistors right here. I, I, I have no clue what that guy is. Hmm. So I have power input right here, and this guy is near the power input. So that guy might be for uh, primary voltage to obviously uh, these guys here, which are your transistors. But then this one over here kind of looks like it's on the secondary because it's over towards the inputs of the scale. That's interesting. So I would assume that that's a primary potentiometer and this here is like a secondary. So maybe coarse and fine. So this would be a fine adjustments. I don't know guys, pretty curious. Uh, the board is obviously all done by hand. The solder job is meh. <laughs> it's, it's probably what you would expect from a mass designed electronic, but I guarantee this guy still works. I put money on it. Now these two, um, Come on, these two nine volts in here. I'm, I should be a little careful so that I get it off intact. As I said before in my previous teardown video, uh, always try and keep extra of these nine volt uh, contact pads. You can get them really cheap off Amazon. And uh, the reason being is they just get destroyed. They just do. And I'm trying to be careful and it's still really difficult. So look at that. Have you ever seen a piece of test equipment <laughs> like that? Look at that. And we do have some corrosion, so I'll clean both of those up. That's another reason, if, guys, if you're ever storing your um, your medical test equipment, take the batteries out. If you are not going to use it for another PM year, take the batteries out and put them in the case. I've got, on all my test equipment, I have the batteries out sitting in the case because I don't know when I'm going to use them again. So there we go. Uh, that's the two 9 volt holders. Very cool. Uh, everything looks really stable other than a little bit of corrosion on those, what are those, positive terminals on these guys? Yeah, positive terminals. Or Yeah, no, no, negative. So it, it interfaces with the negative terminal. Uh, you got to think in reverse. Um, I see that somebody has been inside here because it's got a RTV silicone holding the meter gauge in. Obviously, RTV silicone probably wasn't around in 1950 when, when it actually says it was made. Uh, 1950. Uh, guys, this is so cool. I have one piece of thread right here, and that was what they used for their zip ties in <laughs> yesteryear electronics. You can see right here, there's thread that is wrapped around these cables, and that is their cable management. That's probably so these cables don't get pinched when you put them back in their metal case when you slide it over. But uh, looks fantastic. I'm looking at the main contactor down here and it looks like everything is in beautiful condition. Sometimes you get like some of that uh, grease that's down on your, your contact pads and it'll be all clumpy and that clumpy grease will actually prevent good contact um, which means you can wiggle the knob and you'll get your meter to jump all around this guy looks like it's fine um, this right here this is a red LED I believe 
I don't think they had red LEDs in 1950. I'm a little curious about that. I don't think they had transistors like that in 1950 either. Well, I'm trying to find another date on here, guys. And I have alphanumeric. Uh, I don't know that date code. I've got, this is probably more accurate. On this switch right here, I got 7703. This looks like a 1977 piece of electronic. That's when they were really experimenting with solid state. That is probably a wee bit more accurate. The date code, uh, it says 7802L. So if that's correct, then that might be a 1978 transistor. That would be a little more accurate for what I'm seeing in here. Because red LEDs were not around in 1950. And that almost definitely looks like an LED. Anyway, guys, uh, that is all for the meter itself. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take apart the light probe itself. And let's go ahead and see what this guy looks like on the inside. So, here we go. We're going to take these two fasteners out. Look at that. It's modern day electronics would be hermetically sealed. Um, this one here has got screws, so it's actually repairable. How cool is that? And this light field sensor probably, oh, i got to be careful with that plastic. This light field sensor would probably be repairable. Um, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. All right. So you can see uh, what they did on the back here is they darkened it to prevent any scatter light from affecting your reading. That's interesting. Uh, this is definitely uh, a 1970s type of plastic. <laughs> I've got some foam that's padding it probably to prevent light scatter. Here we go. Sorry guys, I'm trying to be kind of delicate and drag this stuff out. I have the uh, strain relief is wrapped around uh, one of the one of the case uh, standoffs. And down at the bottom, I have a gain adjustment right here. Uh, down in this guy right here. So I'm curious, you calibrate this guy, yes. But I wonder if a lot of the calibration is done right here on your probe itself instead of over there at the base unit. Um, I have a lens, it looks like. I'm trying to be kind of careful. And on the back of the lens, I have some sort of cell. So <laughs> I've got a darkened lens. And now on the back of that, I have this guy right here, which is an interesting type of cell. So I've got, I've got a platter. Oh, oh, stuff is falling out. I've got a platter. I've got one wire on one side, one wire on the other. And what I bet they're doing is as light comes in and expose it, it allows probably electrons to transfer through, kind of like a transistor, you know. Um, that's what it looks like. Now... I can tell right now that this is not a good thing for measurement tools. There's some chips on the back of this glass lens and that would affect the scattering of light. That would be a huge no-go right there. So, hmm. I'm holding it up to the light to see. All right, well, it's, it's a blue filter. Maybe I could place that, that light pad right here in the middle and that might be okay I guess oh this is so wild and this right here is the uh, translucent panel that's that's going to the outside world <laughs> it's the piece that you see right here so I'll put that back on first and then my little blue filter and then this uh, this little tiny tiny sensor right here which it would be something that you could replace if you could ever find whatever the heck that is. Um, no problem. This, this would be very simple to fix. This connector right here is like second to none. Considering there's only two wires inside this, uh, this case. 
got one, two. I got a resistor and a capacitor and two wires that go up to the sensor. And I got all these wires. How about that? So guys, that is a 1970s phototherapy radio meter. How crazy is that? All right, guys. Well, I've taken enough of your time. Fascinating piece of technology. I'm going to assemble this guy back together, clean up some terminals, and see if I can get this guy back up and going. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.